Okay. I'm going to just briefly um, give an update of the status of FAT32. Um, <clears throat> next slide. Okay, there's some issues with the present Arcano of FAT32. The big one is the cache doesn't work at all. Um, the installer likes installing the ifs at the bottom of the config.sys, which of course violates the directives for how ifs get installed. They have to be in front of all the network drivers, otherwise strange things happen. Um, the check disk module in FAT32 didn't return an error code, which led to some other interesting um, problems. PM check disk hangs, or at least appears to hang. It really doesn't, and we'll get to that in a bit. Um, and then uh, because of the fact, I have the cache working, by the way, but because of the fact that the cache is not exactly the world's greatest piece of software, um, it actually, for RAM disks, it runs slower with the cache than without. So I've now set it up so you can exclude disks from being cached. Um, solid state drives also run slower with the cache. And then, um, <clears throat> interestingly, the compiler optimization of the whole driver, the NetLabs driver, well, it's being built as a 286 binary with zero optimization and maximum debug. <clears throat> okay, cache. The cache was turned off <clears throat> in revision 136 on the NetLabs driver. Our driver is based on their revision about 360. It has a few things that are post that that have been installed in it. And the AN driver has removed all of the XFAT stuff from the driver. <clears throat> so they are pretty significantly different at this point in time. Um, <clears throat> the changes that were made that prompted it to be turned off was they loaded a bunch of things into the data segments, into special name data segments but didn't understand how the Watcom compiler actually dealt with those things. In other words, they didn't get it completely done. And so that's why the cache stopped working. And <clears throat> that's basically what I, with um, Rich Walsh and Steve Levine's help, managed to fix so that the cache does work again. The working cache, you can see it does make a difference on regular hard drives. The throughput was about 750 kilobytes per second, and it's up to 3,000 with the cache. And on thumb drives, it's even a bigger jump with 65 kilobytes per second and up to about 2,000. Obviously, benchmarks are benchmarks. They do what they do, so the exact throughput that anybody's going to get is probably going to be worse than this. <clears throat> Unfortunately, in testing it, if you, you torture test a drive, simultaneously are syncing a drive with four different drives on different devices, it traps. Actually, when I turned the optimization back off, it didn't trap, it just hung. And interestingly, the old cache from the 913 driver, it also hangs under that load. The installer issues. Um, fortunately, the problem with the ifs being installed at the bottom of the file was a single missing character in the WIS file. So that's been fixed. So hopefully the next one will be working on that. Um, you have to get it after JFS ifs, but you have to get it up with the ifs. And 
whether it should be after HBFS or not is an open question. Um, with, with some Rex code, you could put it pretty much anywhere. But with warp in itself, the best you're going to do is to get it after JFS ifs and before any other ifs following it, just simply because all I can tell it is after something. Well, you could use Rex to generate the state. Right, that's what I said. But I mean, within warp in. <clears throat> but it's just one more thing that can go wrong. <clears throat> The other interesting thing is if you uninstall the NetLabs driver, it graciously removes boot drive OS2 from your path and also graciously removes boot drive OS2 DLL from the lib path. So when you've uninstalled it and then reinstalled this path 32 and reboot, and it tells you that it can't find DOS call one DLL when you reboot and then refuses to, you now know why. <clears throat> You'll have to go back in and put the, fix the lib path in the path. The Arganoa driver, by the way, doesn't do that. <laughs> but there's not much I can do about the fact that the NetLabs one does. The check disk issues. Check disk doesn't fix a drive if it has mismatched fats on it. It just tells you that it has mismatched fats and I guess in OS2 it should be followed by please reformat because that's the only option you have in OS2 to fix those mismatched fats is to simply reformat the drive. Now scan disk in Windows will at least attempt to fix it and there's an equivalent to scan disk in Linux which is actually better than scan disk and whose name escapes me um, <clears throat> that well, it like I said, at least attempt to fix the mismatched fats. Yeah. Uh, you said check this doesn't fix mismatched fats. You have to format, but you can't format FAT32. You, you, can, fat, you can format FAT32. On OS2? Yeah. Okay. Yes. We have check disk and we have format. Yeah, but I, I thought uh, it was only for FAT. Sorry. No. Okay. This... This driver, the, the NetLabs driver, and this one will format okay. a drive FAT32. Okay. That is the relatively recent. Yeah. It's yeah. the old the old 913 driver will not. Okay. But this the Arca the Arcanoa driver provides that support. It formats and like I said, it also does check disk. And it does check disk as well as Windows does check disk because Windows check disk won't fix the mismatched fats either. You have to use something called scan disk. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the big problem with the um, issue with the return code was that AN Removables intercepts that return code after it does a check disk on a new drive that you've mounted and it then tells you it's successfully mounted even when that error about the mismatched fats occurred. But what I've done is I've fixed it so that it now returns the error, the correct error code. So AN removables will tell you that it failed, which is, makes it easier for you at least. Unfortunately, PM check disk ignores everything. And so what happens if you have mismatched fats and you run PM check disk? You can stare at it for the rest of your life if you would like to. Because it, it never returns. But it's not that it isn't working. It's simply waiting for, for some new event to occur. Because it doesn't return the error message and it doesn't care what the return code from the underlying program is. And so you basically, if, it's, if you've sat there and stared at it for five minutes, close it and do the command line one and see what the error message really is. Other issues. Um, <clears throat> like I said, the SSDs, some SSDs, not all, and, but all the RAM and all my experience with RAM drives is the ca the new cache actually makes them run slower. And that kind of makes sense because 
all I've got is another level of RAM that it's going through to get to the disk. So what's been added is an exclude, and then on that exclude line, and this is on the ifs itself, you can put a list of drive letters. And what it'll do is the um, cache then will ignore those particular drives, even if they are FAT32. Um, like I said, the, compile, the compiler options in NetLabs were quite interesting in that there was no optimization, and I thought the 286 was a nice touch. <laughs> so we have done some optimization on it and stuff like that, and the throughput is somewhat faster even without the cache once we did that optimization. Did you want to do any automatic um, exclusion of drive letters? Or uh, I can imagine S an SSD, you can't really find out if it's an SSD easily. And even finding out if something's a RAM disk is, it, is, is not entirely easy because now we have, it could be the old RAM disk ifs, yeah. or it could be the one yeah. that's coming out of the loader. In, yeah. Well, the way, way I worked, I, I just looked at the um, file system, which returns either uh, the old RAM disk uh, file system, or you look for a new one, or it's going to be JFS. And well, but the thing is, if it returns FAT32, it's a FAT32 drive. That's the problem. I have to know it's a RAM disk, not that it's FAT32. Okay. <laughs> Oh. In other words, the, the yeah. new ones with the loader, I can make them FAT32 drive, I can make it an HPFS drive, which by the way, that's what I recommend, yeah. is, is use HPFS, don't use FAT32, even though that's what it defaults to. Um, <clears throat> so, questions? Now, I have an additional presentation that I was going to add on because I knew that was not going to take 45 minutes. But since we actually have only five minutes left, I don't think I'm going to bother starting it since this gentleman kindly took two-thirds of my time. <laughs> so. If, if I have more time tomorrow, I'll at least go through part of this. And I only did half of my presentation. Yeah, I know. That, that, that's what really worried me. We are very lucky there. So thank you.